Um, so as I said, today is our final lecture. We'll talk about the unity of physics, and mostly we're going to talk about gravity, gravity, gravity. You know, like real estate, real estate, real estate. <coughs> oh, location, 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 sorry. <laughs> so what is gravity? That's what we've been talking about all semester. Right, so now we're going to take a modern view of what is gravity. So we've seen the advancing views all semester from Aristotle to Galileo to Newton. And now we're going to go to Einstein. And here's the big surprise. That's Einstein's conclusion. Gravity is an illusion. All right? There is no such thing as gravity for Einstein. And I'll try to explain how he reached this conclusion. It's an amazing conclusion. Uh, if you remember, when we talked about circular motion, we talked about centripetal acceleration, and we pointed out that when you are at the top of the roller coaster, gravity effects appear to be absent, because I told you you could undo your seat belt, don't do that, undo your seat belt, or if you throw up, you know, your throw up is going to stay with you, and so on, right? Uh, gravity effects appear to be absent when you're moving in a circle fast enough, okay? Okay, so here we have um, an object going in a circle, right? When you go on a roller coaster, you need to put your seat belts on, right? Otherwise you fall off the track. But what's really true is that you don't need seat belts. Don't try it, but that's really true. And here, here's the, you saw what happened when I did this, right? You saw what happened when I did this, right? It fell. However, if you started at the proper place, okay, However, if you started at the proper place, okay, you don't need seat belts. You won't fall down. Okay? And the reason you won't fall down is because if your speed here is big enough, then V squared over R equals G. And because of G, you're not going this way, you're going this way. Right, so try it. Oh, no, don't try it. <laughs> or you know, those those. For example, if you get sick on a roller coaster, if you happen to throw up when you're here, right, that stuff is not going to fall. It's going to stay with you. <laughs> because right, it's like uh, the guy on the satellite, right, that uh, lets go a golf ball and the golf ball just hangs there. It's exactly the same thing. Is that your velocity in this direction is such that v squared over r is equal to g? Okay. And if you remember, in my first lecture, I said, I'm going to defy gravity, right? I said, I, I don't know if you were all here, but I'll repeat that experiment just for fun. So I said, here, here's, a ba here's a bucket and here's some water. There's no water. I'm going to fill water into this bucket. And then, oops. And then I'm going to turn the bucket upside down over my head, and I won't get wet, right? So what, I, what did I do at that time, do you remember? I did circular motion, essentially, right? And, um, and the idea is that when that water is up there, it's not going to fall because there's enough velocity that I'm not going to get wet, right? Because the water is just going to go over my head, upside down, right? But not fall off. You guys can come and try it too, right? Do you want me to make go slower so the, the, the water actually falls? You, you guys want to make me wet, right? All right, all right, I, I got to get rid of some water. All right, all right. I'll do it slower. I'm going to get away from Paul so he doesn't get wet. Ready? Anyway, it's, it's supposed to go. Yeah, it's supposed to go like that, right? <laughs> all right. I don't want to get wet either. All right. <coughs> Okay, so, so what's happening here in your roller coaster is that your velocity is this way, actually I should have pointed that way, and the acceleration is v squared over r, and if your v is large enough that v squared over r equals g, then you don't fall down because that g is really what's happening as you're going around. Similarly, if you are in a satellite in orbit around the Earth, okay, uh, and you carry out experiments such as this, you know, suspending your, your, your partner astronaut up with your finger, or you throw a chair up, or you throw a ball, it doesn't, um, 
it doesn't fall, it just sort of sits there. Okay. So in the in in a satellite, the orbiting Earth, okay, sorry, the, the satellite that orbits the Earth has centripetal acceleration g, okay, but the usual gravity like effects are absent. And we normally say that these astronauts feel weightless. Okay, if you're in gravity, you feel weight uh, like you're in, in the weight. Okay. Hello, my name is Ayla. I'm in grade nine. And my question for you is, do astronauts ever get sick or ill aboard the ISS? Ayla, when we first get to space, we feel sick. Your body's really confused. And so, you know, you're dizzy, your, your lunch is floating around in your belly because you're floating, and, and your, your, what you see doesn't match what you feel. So you want to throw up. So how do you throw up if you get sick in space? Oh, the sun's starting to come up. Um, so here's an astronaut barf bag right here. So let's say you're about to throw up in space. Quick, you get your barf bag open. And now think about what happens on Earth when you throw up. Now that'll be okay. You, uh, you throw up and you have a bag of something horrible and then you throw it away. But in space, if I throw up in this bag, what am I gonna do with it? This bag has to stay with me in space for months. So we want a really good barf bag. So we have one that, uh, that will really protect us. And this one has a, uh, has a liner in it so that when you throw up into it, so that when you throw up into it, you can clean your face off and then you can push everything inside and then it comes with its own Ziploc to clean, put inside the Ziploc and then you can throw it down into the wet trash. So yes, astronauts do occasionally get sick in space, but um, we have special uh, barf bags to deal with it. I'm just gonna close the shutter because it gets a little bright behind me. Next question. So that brings to my first question, which is going to be a dramatic demonstration. Okay, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up on top of this uh, table, right? And I'm going to grab. There's no light on top. Okay, and I'm going to grab this uh, book, which is showing a weight. Right? How much weight is it showing? Uh, five pounds or so. And then I'm going to jump off this. This thing onto the mat, all right? No, I'm not going to jump because I'm a little worried about my knees, okay? Because but somebody else wants to volunteer, it's okay with me. Uh, so instead of jumping, I'm going to throw it, okay, from here. Hopefully I don't break the scale, but I think the physics department can afford another scale if I break it. All right. So the question for you is, what will the scale read, not in this position, but while it's in flight, while both the book and the scale fall together, okay? Will it read this value? Will it read more, less, zero, etc.? We will do the answer first, right? And then we'll see how you guys did. Are you ready? So watch, this, watch the needle, okay? In flight. What did the needle do in flight? Okay, is that what you said? So what do we do? We got rid of the weight, right? We made it weightless. How did we make it weightless? Ah, there's a distribution. Okay, interesting. C0 is correct. Uh, did all the people that were in Paul's section say zero? Okay, good. All right, they did a nice experiment, I thought. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mark. And on today's episode, we'll be doing a gravity water drop. Thank you, Gravity, for keeping us grounded. What did we say about puns? Five minutes in pun prison. Sorry about that. Gravity is a force exerted by all objects with mass that causes them to be attracted to each other. The equipment we're going to need for this experiment includes a disposable cup, a pen, water, and a container or sink to catch a cup in. Although we're not dealing with anything dangerous in this experiment, we always recommend using safety goggles and a lab coat or apron to protect from spills and splashes. The first step in our experiment is to poke a hole in the side of your cup near the bottom. For the next step, simply take the cup, cover the hole we made with your finger, and fill the cup with water.
For the first test in our experiment, hold the cup over a container and remove your finger from the hole. When your finger has been removed from the hole, you'll notice that water will begin to pour out of the hole into your container. The second test of our experiment is to hold your cup of water over a container with your finger covering the hole and drop it. The cup fell really quickly. Let's watch that again, but this time in slow motion. If you watch very carefully, you'll notice that the water in the cup doesn't pour out of the hole as it falls. So, just to review this, if the person was in free fall, like I just did, his weight is zero, okay? And if the person is going in a satellite around the Earth, his weight is also zero. Because both of these cases are acceleration towards the center of the Earth with acceleration value g. Both cases are the same. The only difference between these two cases is that in one case you have no horizontal velocity, and in this case you have a lot of horizontal velocity, so that you make a circular path instead of a straight path. Now, that's the only difference. The acceleration is the same. All right. So that's all pretty um, simple, a uh, little bit insightful about the fact that you're weightless and why you're weightless. But now, we come to the, what do you say, when philosophers and scientists like Einstein and Newton, from a simple experiment, they reach a grand conclusion. Okay? And the grand conclusion is that acceleration cancels the effect of gravity. Okay? So that's the first part of, of the understanding. Now comes the next part of the understanding. And this is now all Einstein. Okay? He says, suppose that you are in free space. Okay? And suppose that in free space you are on a rocket and there's no planet or anything, okay? So you're, there's no gravity and you're on a rocket and you fire the rockets and the rocket accelerates up and you arrange your rockets to accelerate so that you accelerate at G, okay? 9.8 meters per second squared. And now suppose you conduct an experiment while you're inside the accelerating rocket where you drop two masses, okay? One mass is mass m, and the other mass is twice the mass, okay? double the mass. And you let these two masses go. Right? Now the masses are kind of in free space. They're not going anywhere. Okay? But the floor of the elevator is coming at them in full acceleration g. So if this person cannot look out the window, she thinks that the two balls are falling to the floor with, accelerated, with acceleration g. Okay? And so to this person inside the elevator, crucial point, both masses, m and 2m, appear to fall with the same acceleration g. Right? Remember this big puzzle we had right, before. Why do all masses fall with the same acceleration? Well, if, the, if, if what we had is a spaceship falling up, it would behave that way. Because the floor of the capsule accelerates towards the balls. Okay? So that's the important point is that in the absence of an Earth-like mass, you can produce gravity-like effects by having acceleration. So now remember the previous conclusion, and, and this gravity-like effect is that acceleration is independent of mass, and it's a more elegant statement than Newton's, and we'll talk about that some more. But so what we've seen now is that acceleration cancels gravity, and now we're seeing that acceleration in free space, in the, upper, in the other direction, produces gravity-like effects. So that, you know, if, if for example, there was, again, there was no Earth, and Einstein was inside this rocket ship, and it was accelerating at speed, at uh, acceleration g, then his weight would also read his normal weight. So he would no longer be weightless, because he's accelerating upwards. So the weight will be the reading on the scale, his weight will be the reading on the scale, and objects will fall to the floor with the same acceleration independent of mass. Okay? And so what Einstein then concludes from this, this uh, two observations, this mental observations, comes to this great leap of thought that acceleration and gravity are the same thing. Okay? Gravity and acceleration are equivalent, which he calls the equivalence principle, and he calls this my happiest intellectual moment. Okay, when he realized that what gravity is, is acceleration. That's all. This is completely equivalent. <clears throat> so if he was on top of Earth, and he did the experiment, he would get the fall like this. 
But he was, if he was, there was no earth and he was in a spaceship and the spaceship was accelerating, the ball would fall with the same uh, speed versus time pattern as if it was on earth. So acceleration causes gravity-like effects and gravity causes acceleration. So then he gets to this wonderful conclusion that acceleration and gravity are the same thing.